Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris here from Mixdown Online, and today I'm going to answer a question that comes from Jeff. And this one is related to a video that I released back in July about uh, how to bounce and export your tracks for mixing. And it goes like this. For me, it's confusing. The stuff about everything that comes after the event isn't consolidated when bouncing. Uh, didn't the crossfades, audio warp, etc. come after the original event? So that might be a bit confusing for some Cubase users. So I'm going to try to explain to you and give you a deeper understanding of the audio event found in Cubase. All right, so now let's jump in Cubase and check what we have. Okay, now let's first open up the pool. What we find in the pool are audio clips. And what an audio clip is, it's a representation of the WAV file that was recorded or imported into Cubase. Because every time we record some audio or import audio in Cubase, Cubase creates a, an audio clip. That is, again, a representation of the original WAV file stored on your computer. And this is non-destructive. So if I want, I can even edit some audio clips within the pool itself. If I just click on the small icon right here, if I double click, that will open up the sample editor window. From that window, I can do a bit of editing, like uh, uh, doing some pitch correction, um, adding some audio warp if I want to, stuff like that, and all that within the pool itself. But that will not affect the original WAV file, only the audio clip. Now, if we look into the project window, we have audio events. Again, every time we import uh, some audio or um, record some audio within Cubase, on top of uh, Cubase creating a, an audio clip, it will also create an audio event on the project window. And the audio event is the representation of the audio clip, but directly on the project window. The audio event itself, I can do a bunch of stuff with it. I can split that into several audio events if I want to. I can delete part of that event also. I can um, add a fade in and fade out. If I want to reduce the gain of that one event, I can use the clip gain and turn it down or up. It's up to you. It's up to you. I can also, uh, let's double click on it and open up the uh, sample editor, activate the... Uh, uh, very audio. Let's go with very audio. And then let's bring that note up. The fourth one, let's add a, a direct offline processing by clicking on F7. Uh, add a, a delay, mono delay. Click on play. Perfect. All right. So we're good with that. So there you go. So now I have like different types of processing going on on each of those audio events out of the same audio WAV file, okay, that is still intact in the pool. My original file is still there. Now I can see that I'm using some offline processing right here because of that icon. Uh, the pool will tell me that I'm using the uh, direct offline processing on this WAV file, uh, but the file itself is not affected. Only the audio event is affected, but not the original file. So let's have a quick listen. Let's say I'm very happy with uh, the processing of those events. I can select them all, go into audio and down to bounce selection. Now I'm gonna be able to create a new file with that processing applied. So I'm gonna click on replace. And now I have my brand new file uh, created. So a brand new audio event and also if I go back into pool, I have a new file right here. Same name, but with 01 at the end. Now I have that processing like the fades, um, the clip gain, very audio, and also my delay. All into that new original file. Now, if I go back to the original question, um, he was asking that what, what was confusing for him um, is when I was saying that when you do some bounce selection, like I just did here, um, everything that comes after the audio event is not applied to the bounce. 
Okay. And what I'm talking about, what comes after, I'm talking about everything that goes through the channel itself. So I'm going to open my channel settings window. And uh, uh, now I'm talking about the inserts, all the plugins that I would, I would insert on that channel uh, or the sense or the EQ or the channel strip uh, or the pre-gain, um, high pass, low pass filters, you know, uh, even some automation or the volume fader. All of those channel settings will not be applied to the bounce selection option. So this is what I meant by saying that whatever comes after the audio event will not be applied and bounced with that uh, specific feature out of Cubase. Now, if you would love to bounce everything that goes through the channel itself, you need to select your channel and click on export. Now we're talking about an export and audio mix down where you can, uh, you can export one channel or several channels or your entire mix on a stereo file. Now we're talking about more about an export uh, rather than a bounce selection. Now, something else that we need to understand here when, uh, when working with an audio file is that everything that we do on that audio file will affect this, the amount of signal going into our channel. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, that I have a compressor uh, directly inserted on that channel. So I'm just going to add one. I'm going to bring my threshold lower, so I'm just going to overdo it so we can hear the effect um, at a higher ratio. And let's have a quick listen on that last wave form right here. Now let's bring down the gain of that specific event. Now look at the amount of signal coming into the compressor, opposed to this. All right, I'm just going to do this again. Look at the input level right here. So this is something you need to pay attention to, especially if you're in the middle of your mix and you want to clip gain um, some audio events down. Um, just know that the signal that is going to go through your channel is going to be reduced as well. And that is going to affect plugins like compression, reverb, delay, um, distortion, saturation, you know, and so on. It's not going to affect EQ, that is different, but for plugins that will be affected by the amplitude of the signal, those will be affected by uh, your clip gain. If you did some clip gain after you added some plugins on your channel. So this is something you need to pay attention to. So there you go, my friend. I hope that was helpful. If so, don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave everything down below. Until next time, see ya.